Hi, Tim here uh, from World of Sleeves. I know uh, this is a, I took longer to get this video to you than, than I planned on, but uh, I got behind in my reading by, by a few days be, uh, because of migraines. So, I, but uh, I finished the, the fourth one of all, the first four that I showed you yesterday, and uh, so I'll uh, over that fast, uh, but uh, uh, what uh, I have read and uh, what I thought of them, and, th and then I'll uh, show you the next part that are uh, next word that I'm going to be reading. Uh, so, uh, and I'll be showing the uh, wait, wrong side, but right right over here I'll be showing the uh, showing pictures of all the covers, but see, these are all uh, e-books that I read the mass, so I just got uh, copies, copied images off of uh, off the internet so uh, so with that said let me uh, start talking about the books okay the first uh, book is uh, uh, what I read was The Radio Detectives by A. Hyatt Barrel this book, the uh, author, I never read anything before. I didn't even know about this author until I was doing, uh, uh, looking for mysteries from uh, uh, 1922. And uh, this one is uh, first in a children's series. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one main in more at boys you know, because, uh, okay, radio was getting popped popular at that time for around that age and uh, a lot of these uh, 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 children's authors wanted to keep on top of the news to that stuff out there and, uh, and stuff but uh, this one I, I enjoyed but I gave it a rating of four uh, other people would probably give it a lower rating because uh, there's a lot of talk with the electronics and stuff in it and uh, radios, but uh, see with me, I was a computer and uh, electronics technician uh, uh, before I started having my problems, so so I could understand what they're talking about, but others might have uh, problems with it. Okay, the next one up is uh, by an author that uh, I'd uh, been wanting to uh, read a book by yet because I always heard of the 39 steps and how good it was. And uh, I still hadn't read it. I said, figured, okay, with this, I'll read another book by him for the, uh, for March Mystery Madness because I was doing out from 1922. I love this one. I just the uh, reading because yes, that they're somewhere where you're seeing when they're in dialogues with the different Scottish accents and stuff. But it was good. It's about a guy that that uh, was uh, about that uh, just recently that was a grocer and that just recently sold his uh, business and his wife was at a retreat at a spa or something something like that well anyway he didn't want to go to that so he decided that he was uh, uh, going to uh, just do some uh, backpacking and taking for uh, for a week and uh, but he comes across another and the guy's name is so oh, shoot 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 oh uh, it's uh, Dixon uh, Dixon McCunt that's what his name is and uh, 
he have he comes across a guy that does support that I called him a self legend or something if I remember it that's what he called himself. I might be wrong, I can't remember, but uh, uh they were hiking and they both ended up by a by a, a town that they thought sounded interesting by the shore. See uh, I forgot to say that uh, uh, Dixon uh, lived, uh, lived in uh, Glasgow, and so he was up the, he's over near the shore and then noticed a place he'd never heard of before that called, uh, oh, they, uh, can't remember the Scottish name for it, but that uh, was Darkwater and then uh, there were things uh, that said called a tide tower, or a hunting tower I mean. And he thought it seemed interesting, and so he decided to. Uh, but and uh, they decided that they go to the town, uh, try getting a room at the inn there, because the uh, guy that they had uh, said that there was a, or said that there was an inn there. They get there, they found find the inn, but it seemed like. Uh, that nobody's been there for a while but because overgrown the uh, grass and stuff and uh, there's just a few huts around there too and uh, but uh, that they get to the knock on the door of the inn because uh, they tried opening the door it wouldn't open and the innkeeper came and said that they're not open and he was making excuses and stuff uh, well, anyway, he said that it's best I just go to another town and get a room up to the next town over. But uh, they decided they weren't going to leave town. They, they want to see what was behind all this because it just seemed weird and what the way he was talking. Well, they knocked down a door at one of the huts there. It was an older lady, but uh, uh, she took them in and uh, I just let them sleep upstairs. She had a couple of beds, and and we'll have so to help, so help to explain their existence. They talked her into just that, telling that, telling people that uh, uh, Dixon was her nephew. Well, anyway, they uh, and they decided to go find that. Uh, Hunting Tower, which is outside of town, and they get by there, and there's some, uh, it's uh, gates around there, and they uh, they had some men, uh, not with guns, uh, and telling them to go away, or they to shoot at them. Well, they started heading away but they were going to go back to town and they come across a boy that was uh, pretty much a leader of a, uh, a boy scout troop for uh, street kids from uh, Glasgow and they uh, and Dixon knew them some because they'd come to a store at times. Well anyway uh, uh, they were trying to find out the secret of the tower when uh, they heard a uh, lady singing and uh, the poet or what is it, legend or something like that, I can't remember, or Heritage, I can't remember what he said his name was, might be Heritage, said that, uh, that said that had been talking about a lady that he saw uh, uh, at, during World War II in Italy. Yeah, like he heard her singing, and then when he heard that song, he said, hey, that's her. But, uh, so, but what it is, like, they, she, and so she was keeping held hostage. So what it is, is our, those two have been, uh, the, the Boy Scout troop, which, uh, their ways were like the street ways that uh, always act very illegal, but uh, uh, 
her butt didn't help. And then the, the old lady was in on it helping them out too. And uh, so uh, they take on uh, these uh, these guys who are the, they're most of them are foreign and uh, like uh, they say Bolsheviks. And it turns out that lady was a former uh, Russian princess before uh, before the uh, their uh, the uh, or the uh, communists uh, uh, took over the country and she had to run, but. Uh, uh, the, uh, but these guys uh, have uh, a couple of the guys had her, have her locked up until another guy could get there and take them away. Uh, but uh, but uh, I won't be telling you much more. But it's these uh, two men. One's an older guy, an old lady, and a Boy Scout troop. Against that, uh, these. Uh, Known villains, and it's uh, it's just a fun story to read. And okay, the uh, the book next book after that uh, uh, is uh, the Angel of Terror. See, those first two books I read were new to me authors. Now. I said each week I'd have two new to me and two uh, uh, two that I've read books by uh, before. Well, the next one was the Angel of Terror. Uh, well, I got I got that wrong. That the last one I read was the Angel of Terror by Edgar Wallace. Uh, of course, this is about New England. Uh, I should say out uh, the this I gave four or gave a rating of four stars and the same with uh, uh, the radio detectives. It's uh, about uh, 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 about uh, a lawyer in England. Uh, he was a uh, defense attorney. And uh, he, uh, just after he gave uh, gave his closing uh, closing uh, part for the, the the jury before they went out to uh, that well anyway his closing arguments and uh, anyway just that when he got out of the out of the courtroom. A lady comes up to him and says, uh, hey, meet me at a coffee shop over by here. He never knew, he didn't know who she was or anything. She was just acting strange. And he goes and uh, sees her and uh, uh, she said, yeah, you just got to murder her off. And she took and she said, I can tell you about other stuff he's done in other countries. And uh, she told him about the stuff and he said, how do you know all of this? And she said, I'm his wife. And uh, he, he, he's uh, pretty much infatuated with the woman from that first, from there at first, right away. And, uh, uh, well, anyway, yes, yeah, it is. Uh, the jury comes back, and uh, but his client was uh, not guilty. And uh, but uh, later that night, he ended up dead. And they uh, said, "Oh, it was uh, uh, suicide because it's of uh, some we hidden weapons that he kept that he fly around with and stuff." But uh, anyway, this uh, this woman's father came up to him at dinner uh, when he was uh, after that when he was uh, at uh, well he de well he first of all he decides he's going to change it where uh, he has to believe that uh, 
that whoever he's defending are innocent, otherwise he wouldn't take the case. And the uh, uh, woman's father comes up to him after he told somebody that, and uh, he was saying, okay, I can bet you that uh, something's going to be taking place at around such and such a time, and uh, and sure enough, a uh, guy uh, that's but uh, when him and his uh, friend want to leave the, uh, this place, this restaurant, uh, uh, a lady was uh, originally was there with her boyfriend, and they were trying to get a taxi. And she uh, told him how to just uh, go another way, and he hadn't come back, and uh, and then uh, for a while, and then they finally did see him or something like that. Well, anyway, her, her, her boyfriend was dead. And the, uh, he, well, anyway, the guy at the site, he uh, uh, does, uh, you could say he was doing stuff like that. That, but uh, it wasn't him that would kill them or anything, but, uh, it's a weird, but it's a it's a good story. The last story I uh, read was uh, not just a minute was uh, Evil Shepherd by uh, by E. Felix Oppenheim. Oh shoot! It it was another interesting story. I can't remember. <laughs> See, you're hearing some traffic right now going by, but uh, I can now I'm having trouble remembering the story, and yet I did give it four stars. And with me, at times, I might forget stories, but then later on they'll be real strong in my mind and stuff. But yes, I would recommend this story too. I do like e I I do like the Ethel Boppenheim's uh uh the book so uh, uh, he's he wrote, wrote quite a few also but uh I gave it a rating of five stars. And okay, and then the now to start with the with the net with the new uh, books. Uh, okay, I've had I read that book by the Radio Detectives by A. Hyatt Favero. Oh, and uh, actually, on that yes, you see double letters in. Both his first name and last name. In his last name, there's uh, two double letters. But uh, so, but uh, well, anyway, the book is the second book in the series. See, it was also written in 1922. It's uh, Radio Detectives Under the Sea. Uh, I I did uh, start that yesterday after I finished that uh, the Angel of Terror. And uh, it's pretty good so far. They're uh, they're in a submarine in this one. This was back in 1922, and and uh, actually, and the uh, the uh, uh, radio detectives are mainly two boys that uh, they're best friends. That uh, they're Frank Polly and uh, Frank. I can't remember Frank's last name, but uh, and uh, Tom's dad. Uh, works for the government and stuff, but uh, I in the books there help, helping help doing helping the government out with stuff, uh, and uh, so that's the uh, first one of the uh, uh, read, uh, authors I've read before, and the uh, other one that I've read uh, by. That, that I've read a book by that author before is uh, E. Philip Oppenheim. I just thought I've that one and uh, 
It's a great Prince of Shan. I don't know anything about it. And so, and, uh, uh Okay, now for the two, that, and you'll notice there's uh, two L's there and two P's, along with being from 1922. And, uh, okay, then the next one is the first one of uh, authors I haven't read before. This is a Huntress. No, there's two S's there. And uh, by Hobart, uh Footner, so there's a double O in the last name too, and you even see it's from 1922 there. I have, do not know what this book is about. I only know it's a mystery. And I have read anything about him before. No, that looks like he's written a number of books too. And then the the next one. And next and last one that I've read is uh, The Stratton Street Affair by uh, William Lakey. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a uh, mystery and uh, or McQuee or whatever. Uh, but you notice there's two L's in his first name and, and uh, also the T's in Stratton and the E's in Street and uh, F's an affair. So you see all kinds of doubles there. And so, uh, so that's uh, what I've read and what uh, I'm going to be reading. Uh, hopefully, see I, uh, what helped me if I get uh, caught up somewhat yesterday, I participated in the Bookie Springs 24 hour uh, reading marathon, which uh, yeah, I was up till midnight uh, here on uh, uh, on Friday night where it started at 8 Eastern, so I'm uh, in Central, so it started at 9 o'clock for me and uh, went till 9 o'clock last evening. And uh, yeah, I, I was up till midnight uh, uh, and uh, then I just slept in the same room because I did that did it here in my uh, in my man cave. I have my sleeping bag in here, and I have a cot in here, so I so I have it so I can sleep in here. And, uh, and so and then I slept for five and a half hours, and I I started reading it again. And I, after I finished uh, the after I finished the Angel of Terror, uh, I uh, my I had my green start up and uh, I fell asleep for most of the afternoon. But uh, then I uh, got a little ways along in the uh, real detectives under the sea. I'm oh I'm halfway done with that book now, so I should be able to finish it today. And hopefully, hopefully I can get a book done that. I caught one a day or something, so I can get caught up and uh, get uh, because uh, or get uh, like a couple days behind instead of uh, half a week behind. Uh, so I'll let you go now. Uh, um, so uh, until next time, take it easy and keep on reading.